Hello guys, and this is the 13th tutorial of the series, and today I want to go over uh, Kismet, I want to introduce you to it, make sure you know what uh, most of the basic elements of it are, and how to use it. So first of all, to go to Kismet, you want to press the little K icon up here. So basically, what Kismet is, is a visual scripting interface, or or flowchart system, sorry about that. And then basically to do it you use triggers, variables, etc. just as you would in programming, but it's all done for you. Then just just a flowchart system where you just link it all up. So first of all I'm gonna go and for now I'm going to go over some of the actions, conditions, variables and events and I'll go into the, some of the little sub areas like here. So first of all, I'm going to go over the actions. There's the actors. So it's like actor factories, which is basically you can use to spawn um, enemy bots, AI, whatever you want, with these with the little things here. So let's say you can add a trigger. Oops, sorry about that. That new. Of, you know, I've got added tr a uh, trigger in here. Add actor trigger, and then you want to reference it in here. New event using trigger zero and then used and then spawn actor and then you can add a player start add actor player start and the event and the object variable and then you can just hook those up there or spawn point and yeah you can do all that that's how you spawn enemies okay new action and then there's you don't really need to worry about these teleport you can which basically teleport the player so teleport uh, new variable player player and then you can change all players it will change pl uh, teleport all the players to one location so all players you can uncheck that and just have it as number one player index one and then in right no out sorry that will be the target of who it will be going to new event level loaded that's basically telling the teleporter when to teleport it and then out is if you want to play a sound or something else that will go onto it at the same time and then you can add a destination in there <coughs> sorry I've got a sore throat and um yeah, see what el what other actions we got here. Uh, you can destroy items, set mesh, set material, so you can change things around. Then there's AI. You can add you can add a named bot. So it'll have like a name above it, or you can choose the name of the person that you want of the AI that you want to go into the game. Stop firing, start firing, at, and then you'll have to reference it to another player. Uh, camera you can do camera shakes which will okay let's just go get myself another level loaded event I'm gonna keep that in this time and then <coughs> start event um, variable player player and then all players target and then out if you want to add a sound in there so I'm gonna show you how to add a sound quickly um, action and then sound and then play sound and then out will be play go to kismet not kismet sorry the content browser find yourself a sound quickly okay that's loud enough and long enough for you to realize so let's just click on there once you've got it selected in the content browser as I have done there play sound just press the little green use selected object in content browser so now that will be on that as you'll see here there's another out thing say if you want to play an additional sound or if you want to do something else like I don't know just one of the other actions over here so and then target will be player once again can, you can control C control V to make it look a little bit more organized so it's gonna break the links okay break all links to object 
target, target, and once you control C and control V, basically it'll still be exactly the same. You can change one another, but you don't you don't need to. So now I'm just gonna close. Uh, I'm gonna minimize that and close that. And press play game, and you'll see the camera shake, and you got the little sound there. Okay, let's go delete that. And then there's okay, there's a bunch of other actions as well. Cinematics, dummy weapon fire, so whether or not, it, which basically means it's gonna like start firing as like a test. Uh, cover, modify cover. You don't need to go into that at the moment. I'll probably go over that in advanced tutorial. Uh, event, <laughs> attach to event. So basically, you can you've got the little events here. You can put one in, one out. It's just a quick way of, and it'll attach the two of them. And the little red bit, you can choose the event. And then there's input toggle mouse cursor which basically will uh, tell UDK whether or not to show the mouse cursor when you are once you've tr uh, triggered something you can use the basic FS command system <coughs> Sorry. But yeah you can use the basic FS command system in here which I'll go over later on so yeah in, in, uh, GFX UI Close GFX movie. Basically, you can have, add like movies which are in the SWF file format or Swift movie, whatever you want to call. Them. There's close, uh, open, and then captured keys, which will basically tell UDK which keys will be captured and how to use them. And you can change variables for those. Um, you can set timers here, and then you can put delays etc and you can make and this will log things pawn basically a pawn is a like skeletal mesh well, additional player you can make them like enter vehicle exit vehicle give inventory which is basically giving them a weapon like the link gun set infinite ammo Pawn animations, so you can make them do whatever they want with an anim set, which you can get from the content browser, or you can make your own ones if you want. Set variables, you can do flow, object, string, vector. You don't need to go about those. Sound, um, you got set sound node. So if you make a sound node in the viewport, which I'm going to go over in a later tutorial, there's play sound. I'm just going to go in, go over quickly now. Play over here delete tog delete that and let's say you find a sound in your content browser just select it and press that and it will play the sound okay uh, over here you got toggle you got toggle input which will choose whether or not the user will be able to control the game uh, toggle HUD which is the heads up display so let's say quickly file oh sorry I don't want to get a new one save as and then DM test map let's see if I've got it kismet test map to place it yes and I'll show you what a HUD is basically the HUD is the little counter in the bottom right corner which shows how much health ammo and armor you have as you see it has changed when you fire lose ammo lose health whatever it will change Let's go back to Kismet and then condition okay new action also there's voice announcement so play voice message you can do that all with triggers like the level loaded one or add actor add trigger new event using trigger touched uh, touch basically when they walk over it used where well, they have to press E or take damage so I'm just going to go over the touch ones quickly Max trigger count will be zero, which means infinite, or you can change it to like two, three, depending on the amount of times you want the user to be able to use that trigger. You won't need to worry about these settings, they're all default and they will work. New, sorry, new event using trigger used. So you might want to change aim to interact, which 
uh, to uncheck so they don't have to be aiming it and be in the radius and because 9 out of 10 times they will fail to be able to do it so just choose that and then you can change the distance here so let's say 500 it won't change the uh, distance it shows in the viewport so make sure you change that in the viewport relative to the size in Kismet just going to make it a small also there is new event using trigger take damage I'm not going to go over anim uh, hit wall and destroyed for now you won't need to worry about those let's delete that S oh sorry about just deleted my ground so trigger one take damage you can set the minimum damage amount to trigger whatever you're trying to do like Matini or play sound it's limitless whatever you, whatever you can do with kismet any events like that minimum is going to be a hundred so you have to do a hundred damage the the standard player only has a hundred health which so you want to work on relatively uh, how how much damage relative to that you probably won't need to go above 100 but you don't want it to be something like one or otherwise they will have otherwise they can just shoot it once by accident and it will trigger off so you won't need to need to know oh also there are trigger delays so let's say I want 500 or 5000 even it won't unless uh, it's done in seconds so you don't want it to be something like 5,000 because that will take a really long time. Okay, now I'm going to go over some of the conditions that, uh, which are like variables as well. Basically, let's say is a lot is in combat, which is basically whether or not you got someone chasing you, shooting you, or basically fighting them. If it's true, you go out to trigger it. For example, false and then players so you go to variable and then player players and then all players drag that in and then hook that up to there and then true if if it's true you can hook that up to something like Matini play sound or even change like uh, AI things in here like god mode start firing at whatever you want so enough for those let's go back to some more of the conditions it's logged in, it's pi, it's using weapon and then you can change the weapon on there you can make your own weapons with uh, Unreal Script, 3ds Max put it all in the content folder and reference it in Unreal Script and telling it what to do etc I'll probably go over how to make a basic weapon in a future tutorial is benchmarking basically it'll tell you your FPS etc it's carrying flags so let's say you're doing capture the flag it will do you can choose that it's alive whether or not they're dead or not has inventory which is weapon then ca oh, sorry about that and then conditions counter sorry and you can do counters okay now vari variables you got strings which you can set up for things to recognize it. Let's say you have a stri normal string, string value, let's say hello world. And then once you tell something to do that, it will, once you say tell something to do something with hello world, then you link that up, it will do something with it. Uh, I'm not going to go over any more of that. that. Matini da data, let's say I make a new Matini. you can just, okay, I'm just going to break links with that move that away quickly and you can switch Matini data around for another one this is the blank data and as you'll see if I go for this one it's all the same you'll change Matini data over in here as you'll see without any Matini data it will not you will not be able to edit anything let's delete that Okay, let's go over some more variables. Objects, there's object volumes, lists, and objects. Let's say go to object, object, and you can change the object value, the variable name, so which is just like the variable I made previously. New event. Okay, so events you got actors, take damage, destroyed, 
an anim notify. Um, there was a little subsection that I showed you earlier, which had like damage, destroyed, anim notify, which are all triggers. And then if I go back to AI, see enemy, whether or not I can see the enemy. Throw like let's say I'm hiding around here. I'm sorry about that. Two seconds. Uh, yeah, bad interruption there. But yeah, basically it's whether or not they can see them and they'll start shooting at you. Console event, which is the basic FS command system, and then max trigger name, then object down here, and and then event name you can change all of that. Event console event and then uh, yeah. You won't really need to worry about much of it. It's GFX UI. There we go, the FS command system. And then sorry, let's just move this up. Let's say delete that, delete that. GFX and then FS command. So let's say I want it to do behind view which will put us into third person mode. You just drag that over for example and it will do whatever you want. And this HUD, draw image, draw text, so it'll show it'll say whether or not to put text on the screen saying like you have completed the level or whatever, it'll go in the bottom left. I'm not too sure if you can change the position for that but you'd be best off doing it all in flash and working with your own UI scale form do a nice little starter kit sort of thing now, I've worked with that previously and there's the okay other events there is level loaded which is up here new variable level loaded basically what that is saying is once you start the level and they're spawned um, it will trigger off an event. Pawn, which is your player, line of sight, CDF, get inventory. Get inventory basically um, gives the player a weapon or anything you want to do with that. You can change or you can make objects that you can collect with Unreal Script. Uh, line of sight, whether or not they can see them. Death, this basically will kill them, etc. And then physics, hit wall. You won't need to worry about any of these. Well, all you're going to need to worry about is hit wall, touch, and that's about it. Player, player spawned, which is a player spawn trigger. Then you can change out to something else. So let's say I want to delete that. Numatini, out. And once I die and I spawn again, it will play the Matini. I'll probably show. I'll show you how to make stuff move etc with Matini and get you familiar with the interface yeah that's about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial I know it's been quite long but just try to get your head around it play around with it and you will get to know it and you'll 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 see you can do some pretty awesome things with the Kismet interface have fun good luck comment rate subscribe and thanks for watching